What is good? We're back. We got a fresh crack for a fresh episode. Tripod. We got a we got a tripod. We got a we got a new guest. Uh, Mike, how you doing, bud? Nice to have you. What up? Thanks for having me. Awesome to be on. The Wish I had Dynast- here myself. The Dynasty Zoltan FF. Find him at Twitter at Dynasty Zoltan FF. Uh, Just got a new you. brand new podcast, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just dropped the first episode uh, yesterday of the Dynasty Zoltan podcast. Find me uh, wherever you can find podcasts. Very All good. Right. Definitely going to be having to check out that out and make sure you do, too. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. But we're going to we're going to get into some free agents here um, and get some reaction. You know how this show goes. We might go. We might get through a bunch. We might get through two dudes kind of, uh, you know, just wherever the night. Takes how much us. time we're going to have. Yeah. Um, and uh, Mike just informed us as we were getting ready to go. David Montgomery is the latest uh, domino to fall. So we can get some immediate reaction from that. Don't know where you stand on David Montgomery and or the signing to the Lions. So what are your feelings there? Yeah, as a as a big DeAndre Swift fan, that's mm-hmm. that's where mine goes. My mind goes initially. I mean, it seems very likely that at this point uh, he's never going to have that three down role. They don't trust him with it. Uh, he doesn't have the durability. So DeAndre Swift is going to have to fall down in my ranks, probably to the mid to late teens. David Montgomery is not a guy I'm really interested in on the Lions. I know Jamal Williams had, I think, 18 touchdowns sure. last season. It's just not going to happen again. David Montgomery without the receptions is just a bye week uh, flex fill-in if you have to. Um, I could see him getting some type of boost. Maybe you could get a mid-second for him. I'd probably take that. But at this point, I'm not really uh, interested in David Montgomery. How about y'all? Well, we've we've I've we've been a, a long standing big fans of David Montgomery. Um and as much as I wanna be more interested in for maybe the first time having a good offensive line in front of him, we j- you know, like you said, there is there is a, a guy there who is kind of a specialist at, at doing some things that David Montgomery is really good at. Um it hurts it hurts my heart for both of them because I like both Swift and Montgomery. I've been having a real good time in our uh, Patreon mocks, taking Swift at that in that fifth round area and really loving every minute of it. Uh, but definitely need to kind of reevaluate ju- just a little bit uh, here. Obviously, you know, <laughs> it's a tough tough spot there. What do you what do you got? Yeah, I was I was hoping he'd stay with the Bears. I guess that's the first running back domino really to fall. I mean, I guess Penny will get to him perhaps, but the bigger, the bigger of the free agents to fall. And yeah, it's it's a bummer to have that log jam over there. I think uh, I, I would say he's an upgrade on Jamal Williams when healthy. First and the, and the, was, the Lions can't was, sure. the Lions can't rely on Swift as much as we want to. No. say that he's a value and say that, you know, when he touches the ball, every single time he touches the ball, it's amazing. So like I'm still in on Swift, but you know, yeah, when healthy, he's, he's been a 16 point a game kind of guy. Uh, but, but you can't go into a season as an NFL franchise with the expectations that they have and the growth they're trying to take and not bring in somebody. I guess this means that the Jamal Williams isn't going to probably stay there. I can't that, imagine. That puts that to the yeah. side, but it definitely brings, it's not the worst landing spot for Montgomery. I mean, well, Swift gets hurt, and he's he's a workhorse back, you know? Sure. So I think yeah. it probably stays about even for me from where he was to where he is now. It's probably a slight hit on Swift. Yeah, that's true for Montgomery. I mean, first of all, Schefter just broke that he got a real contract. He got three years, $18 million with $11 million guaranteed. So nice. Good he's for running for, backs, baby. Yeah. He's there for at least two years. You're, you're totally right. If if Swift goes down for extended period, David Montgomery could have that, you know, late season 2021 push that he had. Won you some was, leagues. You know, yeah. Two years of in a course. row. Two years in a row yeah. he had that late. Push. And he's got that in him. And, yeah. and Swift is a free agent after this year. Or his contract's up, and I expect that the Lions won't re-sign him. So there is some upside to both of these guys. And if other people are similarly kind of a little bit frustrated with the situation as we are, there could be a buy window. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's um, let's put a plug in that for now. Instant reaction on that one. We'll have some more time to stew as the offseason goes on. Uh, we can keep it in Chicago where uh, Montgomery just departed and, and the – 
Bears have been on the move from pick one trading back. And in that trade, they got DJ Moore, not necessarily a free agent, but in, in the season of kind of what's going on, some movement. Um, what is your uh, what's your thoughts on DJ Moore to the Bears? Seems lateral to me, but what are your general thoughts? I feel much the same. And I know a lot of people uh, were pretty high on the deal. Uh, you know, DJ Moore is getting this upgrade. Sam Darnold's terrible. The thing is, Justin Fields is not an above average passer. The Bears don't have above average volume. So while it might be a little better than last year, it's not, you know, the really high ceiling outcome that we could have hoped for. And when you're looking at a 25 year old wide receiver, I mean, there's a reason there's only one wide receiver in the top 15 of dynasty rankings between ages 25 and 27. And that's because once you hit that age, unless you're producing at the elite AJ Brown level, you're just not going to be worth that much. So in my opinion, it's lateral. DJ Moore is a solid wide receiver too, as he always has been. But if you can move off him like I have a few times in the last few days for the 105, 106 in a super flex draft, maybe you throw in something small to make that happen. I, I think that's a that's an absolutely move you should make. Yeah, same uh, sentiments over here. Uh, <clears throat> Big Co, who is not here, um, we, we own a couple of teams together and immediately went searching for you know, like a first and a, and a, and a, you know, like a Michael Gallup or we were trying to get the one and the two and through, you know, a first and a, and the, and, you know, a throw. We like haven't Michael been Gallup. able to do that. Right. Uh, it's, we, we, it was a little bit bigger and it slowly dwindled down to just that. And we'll see if that, that pans out, but that immediately was the things that started turning. Hey, let, just like you said, let me, let me see if I can capitalize and, and grab a first. It's not that I dislike DJ Moore. I think he's a good player. Um, but you know, for all those things you said, you know, we hope Fields takes that next step. We hope that the offense gets, he, you know, gets it together here and the offense looks a little different moving forward. That's what we're hoping for. We're hoping it's it's Hurts uh, in the following year, Fields in the following year. We're hoping all the, the, the progression is forward, but I, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. So if I could cash out on the value, I, I have no problem doing so. Man, I hate that I'm about to take this stance because I've been a <laughs> hater. Of D- like, I, I was a big fan of DJ Moore coming out as a rookie, and then I backed him for like three straight years. Like, I'm still down to pay the price to get DJ Moore. But then, you know, midway through this past season, and I guess you got to blame it on Baker Mayfield because any wide receiver one on his team isn't going to put up any numbers because he refuses to throw to good fucking players. I don't know what his problem is. <laughs> but when you got Sam Darnold back in with DJ Moore, he was lighting it the fuck up. Like, all he needs is a good quarterback. It, I mean, Justin Fields is definitely the best quarterback ever throw to DJ Moore. Now, I do love Mooney, and I don't love the volume of passing there. And I'm sure both of you all have said that. I've been trying to set up this graphic since so I haven't caught everything exactly what you said you would trade him for. Uh, I know we're trying to get... A 24 first, just a random 24 first, right? And it was a it was a first, a second and gallop, and it's whittled all the way down to first and gallop, and that's the one that's still sitting there, hasn't been declined, so we're still... And yeah, and Matt, what are you, or Mike, sorry, what are you trying to get for uh, DJ Moore? So what, what my goal would be is to combine him with something like a second to get into the top six of the draft to assure mm-hmm. myself, you know, one of the big quarterbacks, Gibbs or JSN. So a, a trade I did yesterday was I traded... Uh, DJ Moore and Isaiah Pacheco got myself the 105. I feel I'm basically paying Isaiah Pacheco to move up, you know, two, three rounds and start up value sure. uh, and and All really day. get that upside. Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. be mad at that, especially super flex. That's a, yeah. that's a fucking fantastic trade there. Yeah. This league is half PPR. So, and one yeah. QB. So right. it's not, uh, and, and even with the 24 first, I, I would absolutely do that just to get the reroll or move him for, you know, 108 or 109 in yeah. a super flex. That's going to be, you know, Johnston or Addison. You're just getting a guy with much higher upside than DJ Moore, who even if he has a good season, it's going to be 14, 15 PPR points a game. That's not going to really like change the destiny of your team the way that the upside of one of these rookies or a future pick could. Yeah, we we just traded Dalvin Cook and Gerald Everett for a twenty four first in that same league, oh. so we're we're accruing twenty four first as as it goes on uh, right Love now. That. Not not because we're well because that twenty three class, class, but just but that twenty four class because no. it's rookie season right now for that twenty three class, and sometimes those are harder to get in the moment, so this, people are yeah. ready to give get away from the, the twenty four. So I will right. say last thought. Okay, when someone goes to a new team, it's like a 
reset and it's like the best that it could be yeah. and there's nothing there well, to especially see especially a guy like him who the analytical community and he's his value has held up decent you're getting a whole reset so that's why i think it is a good time to pounce immediately because there are still going to be the house divided around 50 percent. half the league's going to hate it half the league's going to love it anytime someone first gets moved though his value spikes because it's like oh it's like almost like a rookie you're like i don't know yeah. what it could be <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go ahead and be as optimistic yeah, as yeah. i can be and put the best you know, scenario, scenario yeah. there for me. So yeah, yeah. if you can get what y'all been talking about, get it. Especially if you pair a, you know, post hype guy like DJ Moore with a real big hype guy like Justin Fields, there's going to be that, you know, intersection of people who love those two guys, just see the electric plays in the future and will pay up for them. So that those are the guys you got to target for sure. Um, Those all right. are the guys leaving negative comments down in yeah. the <laughs> comment section. Let's Hit me up that. at me. Let's move over to Derek Carr and the Saints um, yep. and your general feelings on the car signing for them and then what you know what what to expect from this Saints offense moving forward with him. So I, I like the signing for both Carr and the Saints from an NFL perspective. You know, Carr had a tough season last year, but he's pretty solidly, you know, the 15th best quarterback in the league, the 20th best yeah. quarterback in the league. You know what you're going to get. And that division is absolutely terrible. I Wide mean, open. <laughs> Derek Carr goes from being the worst quarterback by a country mile to the best quarterback by a country mile. So I, I see this as a good signing for the Saints, but I don't necessarily love it for guys like Chris Olave because similar to the DJ Moore move, Derek Carr is not a top 15 quarterback. He's not going to elevate Olave over where he's already being valued as a top 10 dynasty guy. So, And he's locked into Carr for at least two, if not three, four years. So it limits Olave's upside a little bit in terms of getting the perfect landing spot, but I'm, I'm by no means selling him. It's a totally solid thing, and he's going to be a top 12 player likely at the wide receiver position. So it, it's he's, it's still a good situation for him. So you'd say he, he is already a wide receiver one, and and it doesn't yeah. get knocked down at all, but it's not like a boost for Chris Olave. Exactly. I, I have him at my at my wide receiver nine in a tier of basically eight to 13. So he's right at that back end wide receiver one range. I wouldn't move him up if you could trade him based off the hype for a guy, you know, like a Drake London or get a Tyree Killer, Stephon Diggs plus something. If you're a win now team, I'd go ahead and do that. But I'm not moving Alave up or down. I, I already yeah. had him in that top 10. I, I would agree. I'd, I'd say pretty neutral. For, for him you're uh yeah. mentioning some some rankings and tiers is that something that we can find on patreon on your patreon yeah absolutely so uh my patreon you can get all of my rankings and tiers uh i do my startup rankings which right now includes rookie picks is also going to include rookies um and the way that i really my philosophy about dynasty is basically do everything in tiers and don't be picky so i'm the guy in the startup Love who's it. moving down five spots getting a 24 second and getting drake london instead of chris alave because i don't really care and someone else is more picky than i am so yeah yeah you can find those rankings as well as my rookie rankings my rookie data model uh on my patreon just check out uh dynasty zoltan at uh, patreon.com perfect um and then you know the rest of that ecosystem in new orleans they just seem uh, how high did Derek Carr go for you then okay sure we're, we're, like go there i guess we could save that for the Derek Carr versus a pick conversation that we're about to have after this free agency thing. But like, you know, uh, Derek Carr or the one eleven. Yeah. And in general, I'm, I'm still taking the one eleven over Derek Carr there. I, I think there are quarterbacks that can be had again in the same tier for cheaper. I'm talking your Jared Goffs, your Geno Smith. I'm taking the cheapest of any of those guys. That's basically my tier from QB 20 to QB 25, including the rookies. Uh, is where you're going to find, you know, Geno Smith, Mac Jones, Derek Carr, those guys. Um, if you can get a pick, again, trade Carr in a second and get up to the 108 in a super flex or 109 and just draft Levis, you know, I'm not a big fan of his, but right. you're getting a re-roll for a guy with way more upside. That being said, Carr is a totally stable QB2, and if you're a contending team, I see nothing wrong with, you know, holding on to him in a super flex league. Um, in a one QB league, he just doesn't have the upside to have really any value, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't care about him at all, really, in one quarterback sure. league. But, yeah, when yeah. we're talking super flex, uh, who, you know, if you had to take the 111, who are you taking at 111? Who, who's uh, the tier of guys? 
Yeah, absolutely. So my tier of guys at the 111 is, you know, you're going to get probably the wide receiver three or four. So whether that's Johnston or Addison or Downs, I'd be happy with any of those guys. You might be looking at the RB3. So whether that's, you know, if Tucker or Evans gets a great landing spot or Charbonnet, obviously, mm-hmm. I'd be happy with moving car, trying to get a higher upside guy like that because – You know, I can find a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo for a late second who's going to give almost as good production as Derek Carr for, you know, a late first. So I'd be looking to make a move like that to give myself more upside and really like limiting my floor. Because if Derek Carr has another bad season, he could be out of the NFL. I mean, a backup, but he could be out of out of a stable role on the Andy Dalton path, let's say. Sure. Yeah. At 111, you're basically going to get the wide receiver four or the running back three. Yeah. You would so, assume, or maybe Levis, if some if a league really right, pushes him down for right. some reason, if it's super flex, or okay. if it's tight end premium, maybe there's a maybe one of the tight ends sneaks up into there. Right, uh, like I I have my my players eight through fourteen are all in one tier right now, and I'd be happy with any yeah. of those over Carr. That's you know Downs, Johnston, Addison, Tucker, Levis, Michael Mayer's in there for a tight end premium league. All those guys I'm happy. No flowers. I do not have flowers there. Um, you know. Flowers had more missed deep balls, not his fault. His quarterback missed him more deep than any other player in college that I watched. And I've, I've gone pretty deep on flowers. So I definitely see why, you know, his metrics that aren't quite as good as some of the other guys, why they're a little bit lower. Uh, but for me, I just didn't see what I wanted to see from flowers in terms of route running. And if you're not a good route runner and you're not very physical, I'm just not going to be that interested in you. W- once he gets the ball in his hands, he is electric. He kind of mm-hmm. reminds me of Kadarius toting a little bit, I abs- but probably a better deep threat. I love him after the catch, but before the catch, he just doesn't quite have that juice. Fair enough. We're, we're, we're big flowers guys, but... We're not here to discuss. Not here yeah. to discuss flowers, so we'll we'll let it slide this time, pal. Yeah, um, we'll we'll get there. Yeah. Um, how is is there any any uh, anybody in the ecosystem in uh, New Orleans that you're would be interested in trying to buy at this point, or is it pretty much Olave or bust? Absolutely, like maybe Juwan Johnson. I, that's exactly the name I was going to say. Um, Juwan Johnson, you know, re-signed there as a restricted free agent for two years, and he's being drafted as essentially the tight end 24, 25, and, you know, the 18th or 19th round of startups. Yeah. I love investing in one stud tight end and then a few really athletic young tight ends, and that's what Juwan Johnson is, you know, the 6'4", 240 mold. He ran a 4'5", yeah. 8". Um, Former and wide he receiver. Was, he's like Waller 2.0, you know. For- absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and and he was top ten in the league last year in red among tight ends and red zone targets and average depth of target. He's getting those high value plays, and I think Carr is going to be comfortable targeting a tight end, especially up the seam. I think Johnson could feast and be. You know, Michael Thomas never been a huge touchdown guy. Alave doesn't really have that size. I could beat see Jawan Johnson being, you know, maybe their number one red option. Zone in the red zone, yeah. yeah, getting getting eight to twelve touchdowns. Yeah, I also like I like I like the flyer on Shahid and in in a mm. kicker in trades. Um nice that probably not on a whole lot of radars and it's it's slowly building up a little bit, but Shahid seems like an easy kicker in trades to just kind of get in as a throw in that really could provide some potential value um at some point because then what do they got right now? Obviously they're bringing yeah, back Michael Thomas, but um so all right, let's keep it moving. How about Jimmy G to Vegas taking car spot? Uh, your your thoughts on Jimmy? You kind of mentioned him a little bit in, in that tier of quarterbacks, you know, in, in a pretty big range there that kind of are all a bit similar production wise. Um, what are your thoughts reuniting with McDaniels? Um, and maybe, you know, it seems to me that 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 that's the play for McDaniels is trying to get him off the hot seat, getting somebody that he's familiar with. Is it that big of a downgrade to Carr? No, gives him more monetary flexibility um, than what they were paying Carr. So. You know, I, I see it as a positive. Plus, he's real handsome. So, I mean, can't argue that. I'm a I'm a Boston guy. I've been I've been blessed to have two beautiful quarterbacks throughout, throughout most of my life. Hard to win with uh, an ugly quarterback. So, it is. I mean, Peyton Manning. That was all the defense. So, it's really yeah. hard to win with an ugly quarterback. But uh, yeah, as far as Jimmy's concerned, I mean, it's basically a one year deal. Mm-hmm. I think they're showing their hand that they're going to draft a quarterback at number seven. 
Um, that would be my prediction, whether it's I, I think Levis is probably the guy there. Uh, maybe Richardson falls there. But Jimmy's your classic guy where he's a good bridge quarterback. I love him as my QB three in a super flex league. Yeah. As far as the actual fit goes, I'm a little worried about it because he's going from Kyle Shanahan to Josh McDaniels, who's, you know, Again, as a Pats fan, I, I have some love for McDaniels, but he just hasn't done it on his own. He had, you know, cars worst season last year, obviously the disaster in Denver. And I look at their skill position players without Waller, and he's going from the second and eighth players in Debo and George Kittle in yards after catch per reception to a team that's now has no one in the top 50. I'm talking about Adams, Renfro, and Jacoby Myers. So he's going to have to do a lot more before the catch because his receivers aren't going to do as much after the catch. And I think Jimmy, you know, he'll be fine. The Raiders defense is terrible. I, I think they go five and, 11, five and 12, and he might be benched uh, for whatever rookie they draft by week eight interesting I, I don't i don't hate that it seems very logical and how they're they've put together that contract um let will be a quarterback by seven i mean they could move up a little bit but they're you know, i don't know it depends on how that goes it could be somebody trading up with the cardinals and then it's maybe it's levis maybe it's hooker in the second round for them you know i don't know um and let Jimmy kind or, of or if they out. truly don't have a good season, it, it could be someone next year. Like if I, I think you're right, McDaniels is trying to go back to what he knows to really right. save his job a little bit. But if it does end up being, you know, a three to six win season, they're probably clearing house trying to trade up for a quarterback in the 2024 draft. Yeah. All right. Well, we mentioned you mentioned Myers as being part of that crew. Waller obviously gets traded. We'll throw to him next. But let's go to Myers here um, and. and What's your, I always liked Myers. The value was always really good. He was a nice wide receiver three plug and play. You can throw him in there. I I just didn't know how much better it was going to get than being in new England. I thought that was an ideal spot for him. Um, And, and just, I don't know why you didn't offer him some money and I don't know what the deal was there, but he seemed like that was a good fit kind of moving forward. He seems like a very new England guy, which maybe that's why he's in with McDaniel here. Um, But you know, what, what are your thoughts there? I mean, obviously there was never a, a ridiculous amount of volume placed on Jacoby Myers, but I th- thought that he was always a nice, uh, you know, 13th round pickup that, that could give you a very strong startability, especially yeah, PPR wise. And, and Jacoby Myers last year was in the top 15% of what, sorry, the top 15 of wide receiver target share. You know, the Pats run the ball a lot. They throw to their running backs a lot, but when they threw the ball to wideouts, it was going to Jacoby Myers a lot. The problem now is that, first of all, he basically got a one-year deal. It's it's only only the first year is guaranteed. He only got $33 million total. Um, it, it wasn't a huge contract for him. The market never really formed. I mean, he got less than Alan Lazard did. So, And the other issue is he's going to a team that has – you know, a, a pretty similar player in Hunter Renfro. Right. Both guys lined up in the slot 69 to 70% of the time last season. 80% of their targets were in the slot for both players. It's it's just not a situation where he's going to see more than, you know, 110 targets. And he's already shown that he's not going to be, you know, a two plus point per target guy. So I think he'll be similar to what he was in years past with maybe a little bit lower of an upside. Uh, I still think he's a solid maybe wide receiver four now. Mm -hmm. You can play him in the flex some weeks. I think he's going to give you five for 55, but he's not going to give you one of those, you know, renaissance Keenan Allen seasons that might have been his, you know, pie in the sky ceiling before the signing. Sure. Um, I I like I like that uh, for the most part. Let's let's keep it moving with Myers here or with uh with the free agents uh let's let's shoot over to some running backs there hasn't been a whole lot of running back movement montgomery led the show but uh you know penny uh goes over to the eagles um yeah what are your what's your thoughts there it seems like uh twitter is a buzz with really liking it i i can't trust the eagles and their running back the way they divvy carry ups and their workloads yes miles sanders had you know a nice you know, run throughout the season and stretches. They, they didn't throw to him, which is, you know, I think a, a blasphemous use of Miles Sanders. I think he can catch uh, reasonably well, uh, but the rotation is, is very frustrating there. Plus you have Penny. Hurt. How can you trust Penny? You have Hurts who can yeah, run that's it in. So Speaking of being Hurts. Sure. But <laughs> I mean, Penny Penny has had some good some good sections over the last two years where it was like, yeah, he, looks, a stretch. he looks really good on the field. Um, but yeah. You know, he'd have to get volume and, you know, touchdowns without getting the catches. It just seems like 
I'm I, I, if I could get anything, I'm I'm pretty much going to reset on on Penny and you know. Yeah, I I totally agree. It's a narrow path to sustained fantasy relevance, which is what he would need for his value to go above where it is right now. Um, his contract was just reported. It's only 600k guaranteed max value of two million dollars. That that's not what Hollow. you give. Yeah, yeah, that's not what you give to a potential starting running back. And and in that tweet that reported that. Um, it was also mentioned that the most likely path for the RB1 will be a pick in the middle rounds. So I still think it's going to be, you know, a round three, round four pick. Maybe you're looking at a Sean Tucker or a, a Tank Bigsby. I think that's going to be the guy there. That's all this is setting up to be. I think Rashad Penny's value is insanely high right now. You can sell him for the 209, the 210. You could probably get a 24 second in a lot of cases. Ooh. And I'm doing that really in a in All a blink. Day. Yeah. All yeah. It's, day. You could have picked this guy up for a for you know a 27 third uh, yesterday, <laughs> and now all of a sudden because he signs in Philly to likely be the third string and get paid under a million bucks, now he's worth a second. Yeah. I just I, I don't see it. And the, you know there there pro- there will most likely be a few flashes where it's like oh maybe mm-hmm. I can get Penny in the lineup next week, and then it's fucking nothing. They re-signed Boston Scott. Also, that kind of flew under the radar. That guy murdered some some. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they love him in the red zone for whatever reason. Vulture. Um, yeah. yeah. Touchdown vulture. Uh, and then, you know, Gainwell had a nice postseason run. And, and you know, we like Gainwell over here a, a decent amount, but nothing to get too excited about. So it's just a, a bad ecosystem for running backs in general. Hurts, you know, they're a, gr- a great running team, but it does they don't give it to one guy. Hurts gets a right. decent amount of it. He gets the touchdowns, you know, so it's it's not I don't think it's an ideal spot for really any running back that I want much to do with unless they're super cheap. Does yeah, this- I totally agree. Does this set up at all to still possibly bring Miles Sanders back? I don't think so. It's not like a ridiculous signing, and we haven't had the draft yet, and Miles Sanders is not signed somewhere else. Like, And he's, his value is only getting cheaper by did, the hour. I did see a Miles Sanders tweet that said, basically, see you later, Philadelphia. Love you. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. W- w- once you send out that uh, thanks for all the good times <laughs> tweet, yeah. you know, I've – I've had a situation with some ex-girlfriends where I thought I could then go back and say, no, I didn't mean it. It rarely works out. Are I, you I drunk? He's not going to go back to Philly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and I was. But. Yeah. <laughs> Normally drunk. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 hit one more of these and then we'll get out of here, do some picks versus players. Uh, let's. I mentioned nice. Waller. What do you think? Uh, we've been a big, big Waller podcast. Um, going, to the, going to the G-Men, it seems, you know, like a really good spot, you know, there's not a whole lot of target competition right now. I like Isaiah Hodgins a good bit in those late rounds to be a nice flex wide receiver four, wide receiver three with some upside. Wandell, I like. I, me and Big Co just traded for one, just traded a third round pick for Wandell. Oh, um, nice. So that was a nice, you know, one of those things where people are just mass messaging, hey, I'll take this guy, I'll take this guy for this pick, I'll take this guy for this pick. And it's like, oh, and third you got rush. Let's go. Yeah. Boom. Here you go. Like, gotta be the first one there. Boom. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm very interested in investing in kind of what's going on over there. Uh, what are your thoughts on Darren Waller? Who's, you know, been a little bit of a disappointment the last few seasons injury wise for the most part. Um, what's your thoughts? I'm a little, I'm a little conflicted about it. Now I was, most of the leagues I play in are half tight end premium and Mm -hmm. Waller was falling to the 12th round. And at that price, I was very, very much in, but the early signs are that he's now going to be, you know, seventh or eighth round startup guy worth, you know, basically a late first in a lot of leagues. At that price, I'm a little bit more queasy because he's 31 years old. He is on a three year contract and they did just pay something to get him. So clearly they're going to want to utilize him to make, you know, make good on this trade essentially. But Daniel Jones's skill is not throwing over the middle, especially not throwing deep over the middle, which is a lot of what Waller does. I think a lot of it's going to depend on whether they draft a wide receiver this offseason and who that guy is because what his role is, what he does. Exactly. I'd be most interested in Waller if they draft a guy like, let's say, Josh Downs in the second round, because that would indicate to me that Waller is going to play a lot lined up out wide, maybe as the ISO guy in a, you know, one by three set, something like that. That could be some high upside for Waller. But if he's just playing your traditional tight end role, the volume in this offense is not going to be high enough for him to get to the, you know, 16 points a game that he got to, you know, two and three years ago. So, He's a tentative hold for me right now, but like you guys were saying earlier, 
when someone goes to a new team, everyone gets super pumped. And even though Waller's 31 years old, this is only the second team he's been, you know, relevant on. So right. there could be some people looking to pay up for him. And if you could move to a younger option like Dulcich or Najoku, and uh, I ran some Twitter polls today, uh, Twitter prefers Waller to both of those guys. They also prefer Waller to the 203. All of the where you could get, you know, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, something like sure. that. All of those moves, I, I would at least look into. Fryermuth or Waller? Fryermuth, yeah. Yeah. And you're talking tight you end premium on those on that two hundred three? Yeah, yeah, ha- half tight end premium, exactly. And and th- and that's a spot where I mean, I have Kincaid ninth in my rankings. I I know that's irrationally high to no, some, and no. I, I wouldn't take him ninth. But I I love Kincaid. He's going to fall to the early second. Yeah, like, going like to two one Kincaid. Second. Let's go. Exactly, and and. Well, you, you know, said it before. It kind of that range from eight or nine to you know two. Well, yeah. I don't know what you said. Four maybe, two yeah. five like that. Sure, that all seems like a really strong range of of guys that I really like. Um, yeah, completely agree. So no, I, I, it's all about price. It's it's never about hating too. I don't hate too many players. And yeah, if, if that's the price for Waller and it shoots all the way back up to a first, I do definitely need to start considering uh, dumping my Waller shares and and re rolling. Um, luckily tight end does seem to be the position where you can be at the fountain of youth for a little while and there's not a whole lot of miles on him, but he also treated his body very poorly for a very long time, which is why he wasn't in the league. So, you know, I don't know if that has any contributing factors to where his body's been over the last couple of years. I'm not saying it does or doesn't. I'm just saying, um, you know, for a guy with not a lot of mileage, he put a lot of mileage on a different way. Um, so no, I don't think that catches up to you till a little no, bit later. Well, I'm 35 and it's caught up to me a little bit here in the <laughs> recent years. So, um, but yeah, so Evan Ingram or Waller? <sighs> Damn, that's tough because I love Ingram as a buy low, but I think I got to go Waller there. Yeah. We've just seen, we've seen a, I guess we saw Ingram's upside the last four or five weeks of last year, but we've seen a consistent level of play from Waller where he was basically, you know, the one C to Kittle and Kelsey for a few years there sure. where I got to take Waller because Ingram again, like he, he might not be there for long. We know he's shown issues in the past. He's not a guy who I ever see a team really fully trusting in a dynasty community, really trusting in. So I'll take the potential of, you know, a top five season from Waller over, you know, the likely TE 10 season from Ingram McBride or Waller. Now this is where it gets tough. I, I, I really like Trey McBride. Same. Realistically, like it's tough to take him over Waller. Like yeah. he just, he wasn't very, I, I actually, I put out a long thread on my Twitter. If, if you search my name with Trey McBride going over some of his film from last year, he looked a lot better. There were basically three periods of his season, you know, pre Ertz, he did nothing right. for three weeks after Ertz got hurt. He was terrible, pretty much the worst tight end on a, you know, per route basis. And then he was pretty good and showed some flashes. So I don't think I'd have it in me to move McBride for Waller. You get to but two, I also though. Are you, are you, you get a two and McBride? Then I'm doing it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Or, or if I can get a guy like Ingram and McBride or Ingram in a two, really any of those, I'd, I'd be okay with. But yeah, Waller and McBride will be in the same tier in my uh, updated rankings for sure. Let's say Schultz goes to the Chargers. Everybody's saying that's the, the land. I don't know if he will. I don't. They probably don't have the room for it. But if Schultz yeah. or, or Waller at, in, in a Schultz in a landing spot you like um, or Waller. Uh, another great question. I think a lot of it depends on the Schultz contract because I myself and a lot of the dynasty community hasn't believed in Dalton Schultz as like a really elite tight end. It's been, you know, the system propping him up, right. but if you're right he gets, back in that system with, uh, with Kellen, exactly. And, and... I think I'd have to go Schultz there just cause he's five years younger, assuming he gets, you know, two to three years guaranteed. And I think he would, you know, I, I own a lot of Gerald Everett. I was, you know, at a cheap price, of course, but mm-hmm. I've been very high on him. He left so many points on the table last yeah. year for the Chargers. I, I think they could easily support a top five tight end. I agree. I agree. I agree with all that. So I like that. You got you gotta, anything to wrap this up with? You got to at least like, I mean, I get that Daniel Jones is not great over the middle, but Waller can play outside and yeah. You know, he's a playmaker. If he can just stay healthy, the Giants are thirsty for somebody to throw to. Thirsty. Like, they got more work to do 
for Daniel Jones. And it, as good as it was last year, he was throwing to Hodg- Hodgins, right? That, Hodgins. Was, that wasn't until like week eight. Hodgins? Yeah. Hodgins. Yeah. Hodgins, yeah. And, and he looks good. You know, I think he's a good, nice buy still. But, you know, uh, you got to think that this has to be, they have to, I mean, what do they pay for him? What are they? They paid a third, and just a third. I guess that's not they a paid, ton. But they paid the same pick that uh, they got in the Kadarius Tony trade. So it's actually it's it's the conditional third from the Chiefs. It's like the last pick, pick of the third round. Yeah, yeah pick a hundred. Um, but the reason he was that cheap is because he's got three years fully guaranteed left on his contract for about twelve, thirteen million a year. So he's not cheap. You could see why the Raiders would want to move on from him. And you're right. He he does have that upside. Like I, I could easily see him put up, you know, 90 catches for 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns. Right back is, to you know, Peak Waller, baby. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Tight end premium. That's it, fantastic. So it it can happen. I just yeah. I just wouldn't count on it. And there, there's no floor on him. Right. He could easily have another injury prone year, and then sure. he's just an albatross of a contract. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, we're gonna wrap up this segment. We're gonna go to picks first players next. Uh, but we very much appreciate you joining us. Um, and you can catch it. Go, go find the next video to find more with, uh, with Mike. Uh, tell us where we can find you on the Twitter and, and all your uh, works. Yeah, absolutely. So I am uh, at Dynasty Zoltan FF on Twitter. Uh, my Patreon, same thing, Dynasty Zoltan and uh, Dynasty Zoltan Fantasy Football <laughs> Podcast. So it's, uh, it's pretty easy. Just search that on basically any platform. And fortunately, it's a weird enough name that no one else has it. So you'll, uh, you'll find my work there. You say Zoltan three times fast, he appears. Oh. That's true. It's true. <laughs> but that's going to cost you more than the uh, $6 a month for the Patreon. That's right. That's extra. That's right. Um, all right. Well, we appreciate all you. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. And so you can go ahead and, you know, if, you, if you're subscribed, you probably just get the next video right to your little fingertips. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably drop the next day. All right. All right. We, we appreciate y'all. Peace. Peace.